The biggest lie the Hawks ever sold. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. The U.S. is the only nation on Earth whose entire economy is built on arms manufacturing and security guarantees to tyrannical Gulf states. It's not just correct to call the U.S. empire a uniquely evil power structure. It's correct to say it's impossible for it not to be. Saudi Arabia's destruction of Yemen and proxy warfare in Syria are many thousands of times more evil and horrific than the assassination of one Washington Post columnist. But because the empire is built on that kind of bloodshed, it gets far less attention. Biden continuing the unbroken presidential tradition of courting the Saudis is not a betrayal of U.S. values, but a very normal expression of them. You either want the complete dismantlement of the U.S. empire or you don't. If you don't, Quit bitching about how the sausage gets made. The difference between Democrats and Republicans is that Republicans say they will do evil things and then do evil things, while Democrats say they will not do evil things and then do evil things. On one hand, polls say Americans don't want Biden to run again, but on the other hand, there's zero chance Democrats put forward a different candidate who's stronger than the rot-brained empire mummy. Friendly reminder that Russiagate was a PSYOP that had its origins in the U.S. intelligence cartel, was used to facilitate long-standing agendas of the U.S. intelligence cartel, is the reason liberals are now cheerleading the U.S. proxy war in Ukraine, and that only an idiot would call this a coincidence. Current proxy warfare tactics in Ukraine have no chance of delivering a swift defeat to Russia. What they do have is a pretty good chance of creating a costly military quagmire for Russia and a 100% certainty of creating massive profits for the arms industry. The biggest lie the Hawks ever sold was that their militaristic policies prevent the problems they actually create. Militarizing against Russia caused this war. The war on terror created terror groups. Continuing the encirclement of China will likely lead to a nasty confrontation there etc. Working to bring down Moscow and Beijing would be a great way to move towards securing unipolar planetary hegemony while simultaneously unleashing the kind of worldwide economic chaos and desperation that shock doctrine capitalism engineers have heretofore only dreamed of. The most important job of the Western media right now is convincing the public that the world's major powers splitting into two increasingly hostile alliances is probably nothing to worry about. Celebrities getting political is not a problem in itself. The problem is that most of them don't start growing their political awareness until they're already famous, when they are informing their worldview from inside an elite echo chamber that has a vested interest in preserving the status quo. Believing there are good billionaires is even dumber than believing there are good U.S. presidents. And believing there are good mainstream media pundits is even dumber than believing that there are good billionaires. No one ever espouses a mainstream political worldview because they have thoroughly examined all the options and sincerely believe that one's the best. It's always because they don't know other political worldviews exist, or aren't sufficiently familiar with them, or have been propagandized into believing false things about them, or because they work in a career that is advanced by adhering to mainstream political perspectives. This is true because mainstream political worldviews do not exist to help people and make good things happen. They exist to facilitate plutocracy and empire. Nobody who deeply investigates their nature and contrasts them with alternatives comes away thinking they're the best whether they're someone with left-wing or right-wing sympathies or anywhere in between. The only reason mainstream politics are mainstream is because powerful manipulators pour a tremendous amount of wealth and energy into making them mainstream. If there were actually a marketplace of ideas on that front, mainstream politics would die. The empire still fears the public. If it didn't, it wouldn't bother rolling out so much propaganda ahead of all its depraved actions. It would just act. They work so hard to manufacture our consent because they're still afraid of what we'll do to them if we decide we don't consent. 
Just something I think is worth calling to mind once in a while.